doesn't need to go to prison. Yes. All right. Do you need a minute? No. All right. Come on up. Deputy Gibbs, I'll swear again. Andrea Snyderman, A N D R E A S N E I D E R M A N. Mrs. Snyderman, you have been found guilty of various charges by a jury, and you do have a right to make a statement in your behalf before your sentence is imposed. And I will tell you now that no matter what sentence I impose, you do have a right to appeal whatever sentence that is imposed, and uh, you have 30 days from today's date of sentencing to file your notice of intent to appeal. And whether these lawyers or another lawyer file that on your behalf is completely up to them. But I, if they are not available, someone will be appointed for that purpose if you do not have legal representation for that purpose. Do you understand that right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, at this point in time, you're more than welcome to make a statement. You don't have to make a statement. It's completely up to you. Would you like to make a statement to me at this point in time? I would. You may proceed. Okay. Your Honor, I'm here to ask for your leniency, for the sake of my children, Sophia and Ian. I'm gonna try to find the words to describe what it's been like, and indescribable and unimaginable, almost three years. I met Rusty when I was 18. We fell in love and began our futures together. After having children, I worked from home. And G was my first job back in an office environment. It was an exciting and terrifying time for me. I didn't know what to expect. At first, I thought my boss, Mr. Newman, was a nice guy, taking an interest in me as his new employee. He was showing and teaching me the business, and I was appreciative. I believed he controlled my career and I let him therefore control my time and too much of my life. I wanted to do well, and I thought being nice to him was the answer. One of my greatest regrets will always be allowing this predator into my life for not being stronger, for not dispelling his advances sooner. I viewed Mr. Newman as a mentor, a kind and helpful man, a father of three. I never thought Mr. Newman was capable of murder. As time went on, our friendship grew. So too did my reliance on him at work. The line of appropriate conduct clearly blurred. In hindsight, I should have told Rusty about his advances. I should have quit my job, filed a report with HR, and hid from Mr. Newman. There's so many reasons that I didn't. <laughs> yes, I was flattered by what seemed like harmless attention. I thought I could handle him. I thought he was just a man being a man. And the things that I did, like introducing him to Rusty and sending him pictures of our happy family, they all backfired. I didn't know this mild-mannered business executive was capable of killing anyone. In hindsight, knowing now that Mr. Newman is a murderer, I wish I would have immediately opened my GE emails and gone through them, as this court has done, for signs of what can now be seen as an obsession with me. What I remembered as Isolated, inappropriate, and insignificant comments tell a different story when read in chronological order and with the knowledge that Mr. Newman killed my husband. I am shamed by and apologize for my emails. I regret sharing anything personal with this man. Allowing him to get too close to me on an emotional level was a complete betrayal as I've never shared my personal feelings with any man other than Rusty. But I want to be clear. There was no physical romance between Mr. Newman and me. No sex, no kissing, nothing other than putting my head on his shoulder to cry 
than holding his hand on one occasion to comfort him. I was never leaving my true love, Rusty, and our children. And I made that clear, especially in October of 2010. After November 18, 2010, when Mr. Newman killed Rusty, I stopped sleeping. I stopped eating. My life was misery without Rusty. And if not for my children, I wanted to die. I felt those exact same feelings when visiting Rusty's gravesite with Sophia and Ian last week for the first time in a year. Despite my state of mind following the murder, I did nothing to obstruct justice in any way. I gave the police names, passwords, access to all of my personal and G computers and phone information. When asked on November 19th, 2010, if I knew anyone interested in breaking up my family, I said yes, and immediately gave Mr. Newman's name to the police. At the time, I felt great apprehension about giving the name of my boss, someone who I thought was a friend, to the police as a murder suspect. But I was asked a question, and I answered it truthfully. I later took the stand and Mr. Newman's murder trial because I wanted to prove that he was sane. I did not prepare for my testimony. I didn't review any emails, and I ignored all the people who told me not to testify. I was shocked when the prosecution began attacking me and making me the focal point of Mr. Newman's trial. Without an attorney to object, to the inappropriate and irrelevant questioning, I fought back and I tried to defend myself. I'm embarrassed when I watch the tape of my testimony and I feel it does not represent who I am. Emmy Newman has already robbed my children of their father and his love. Rusty is no longer here to play baseball with Ian or to carry Sophia on his shoulders. He will never have the chance to raise his children. He should be at Ian's bar mitzvah. <coughs> he should be there to walk Sophia down the aisle. He should be there the day they graduate from high school and college. He will never get to sit at the head of the Passover table again, or with his grandchildren. He deserved to have that. There is an entire history that's been erased by Mr. Newman, and it will never be. Sophia and Ian desperately need me to help fill that role for them. They have already suffered so much. Since last August, they've had no parent to join them at school events, to take them to the playground, or to go have an ice cream, all because the state wrongly charged me with a murder that I had nothing to do with and would do anything to undo. I want to go back to the life I had with Rusty. This is not a world that I understand anymore. However, I am determined to raise my children to be happy, protected citizens of this country. I'm the person that should be doing that. Sophia and Ian have been punished enough. Please let me go home to my kids. Mr. Newman changed my children's lives forever by killing their father. Please don't make them live without their mother. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James, anything? No, sir. Mr. Clegg, anything else? No, sir. All right, you may come down, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Clegg, any other witnesses? <coughs> All right. Mr. Kane, you have the last word. 
Um, 